Gray is one of Ireland's most celebrated singer-songwriters, interpreters of Irish traditional music and a performer of Irish rock. And that is the wonderful Paul Brady. Hi, Paul. How are you doing? I'm good indeed. And yourself? I'm really well, thanks. Yeah, I'm really excited to explore what we've got today because you've got a new album out, Maybe So. When, When did that come out? It came out on uh, about a week ago. Uh, well, actually, it was last Friday, I think, uh, the twenty second of April. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so it's so new. Is it? Are you kind of still in that that album buzz when you just first release something? Um. Well, funnily enough, the buzz comes when you're when you're recording it and mixing it, and uh, and when you're designing the the package. You know that that's the fun bit. I mean. Um, I suppose uh, the uh, the release seems a little unreal after all that hands-on approach, uh, yeah. but it's it's exciting to be to be uh, bringing it to people. Yeah, and was the recording of this album quite different because it was during lockdown, wasn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, for a long period of lockdown, we weren't allowed to travel more than some at the beginning two kilometers from from our house. So, so nobody was so uh um so i couldn't get musicians to come to the studio uh so i basically you know for the song i worked up the songs myself quite a bit and then sent them out uh, digitally to musicians in their own places uh so it, it was a kind of a lonesome endeavor in the beginning but it all it all came together when everybody put their pieces on it yeah yeah and i want to explore the sort of the people who who collaborated on that in a moment but first i'd quite like to ask what are the themes and ideas that you explore on this album well there's a wide variety like you know i mean a lot of the songs i i have written myself but then there's 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 a, a number of them that i wrote with other uh, writers and in some instances it's largely their uh, lyrics on the, on those particular songs. Um, what do we see? Well, I mean, I've all, I'm always interested in in um, how people get on with each other, and and sometimes it's even more interesting how they don't get on with each other. So uh, that often, you know, uh, provides good uh, material to write a song. Um, but there is a very, I mean, there is a song on it. Uh, the first song on, on it, I like to describe all, as a fun song about depression, <laughs> uh, <laughs> because <laughs> there was a time in mid in mid lockdown, mid COVID, that I began to get really sick of it all and wonder mm-hmm. was anything ever going to come back. So uh, this song, "How Come I Feel Bad," <laughs> which is the first track on the record, I, I I wrote with a great friend of mine, Theo Katzman. Uh, when he was over here from America, Theo plays with uh, well, he plays with lots of different bands in America, and uh, so we wrote that one together. And um, then there's a song uh, about fathers and sons, uh, neither of which is easy to be. <laughs> um, <laughs> song called "The Tower of Gone," which uh, is a sort of a song, I suppose, sung by a father to his son and. Um, hopefully trying to guide him through his life um lots of other different themes too um where are we just behind the veil wow well that was a song that i co-wrote with my dear late friend shay healy and we as we were writing the song we, it's a song which is actually sung by someone who is uh, already left the planet and s- singing to the, his friends and loved ones that he's left behind, telling them uh, that everything is okay and not mm-hmm. to worry. Um, so uh, we made a promise to each other as we were writing the song that whoever left the planet first, um, the other would sing it at their funeral. And unfortunately, I had to do that uh, last April of 21 because my dear friend Shay passed on. But that's an interesting song from that point of view. And I'm sure he's laughing up there. You know, <laughs> it's I, I listen to that song and I think that it's such a beautiful okay, if you're mourning and you're thinking about that person. It is it's kind of like they are giving that message, but it's not morbid. It's more filled with hope 
than anything else which it, it really was beautiful i couldn't couldn't get over how nice that song was well, um, that's, that's and... good i've actually sung it a, f- a few times now at, at friends funerals yeah. yeah and um i mean i wasn't expecting ever to to write a song like that but uh out it came <laughs> but also that's another thing like if if someone has died and you don't know in those situations you don't know what to say and so having a song like that to sing it's quite therapeutic in a way i feel well yeah i mean um it's it has an amazing effect when you sing it in a in a church um on the people who who are there yeah. uh i was i was quite surprised at the strength of emotion that it released in people so uh yeah i'm i'm happy with that song you have quite a few different songs in there, including your song, your improvisations on the Galway Reel, um, mm-hmm. which kind of I feel is a bit of a, a nod to your Irish traditional folk music background there. I feel like there's so many different themes and, and sounds and styles that you have going on in the album. Do you feel like it's maybe a culmination of all of the different musical styles that you've you've performed throughout your career? That's what I've always aspired towards. I mean, when I started... Um, in you know in the 70s and well late 60s to be honest <laughs> uh, <clears throat> music was well i mean in the 70s and 80s music became quite compartmentalized and um, <clears throat> i think it was as the marketing departments grew in record companies <laughs> um, so it was very difficult to have a broad palette uh, as a as a performer a writer and uh, <clears throat> People were, you know, for most of my career, you know, I've had to deal with the Paul Brady, who is he uh, kind of thing. What is he? What is he? He's, is he this? Is he that? Or the other thing? And I was always a bit of everything. And uh, so I've aspired to, to, uh, I suppose, express that through my rec- the last few records I've made. I mean, the last album, uh, Unfinished Business, had a traditional song on it, too. Um so yes, uh, and fortunately these days we seem to be in an era where people uh, can take a, a, a broad palette uh, mm. from an artist and not scratch their heads. Yeah. No, it's it's brilliant. It means that you, as you're listening, you don't know what's going to come next, and it does keep you excited and on your toes, which I think is always great in an album. Um, Good. But as you said earlier, you collaborated with a lot of artists and you've mentioned Theo Katzman. Who else is featured or helped you with this album? Well, uh, Paul Muldoon, who's probably the preeminent poet in Ireland at at the moment, uh, wrote the lyrics to the the song um, uh, Nothing is as it seems. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Paul Muldoon. Um, he, his most recent outing was as the editor of uh, Paul McCartney's big collection lyrics that that was out at Christmas. Um, but he's uh, he's a quirky writer, and for a time he was a producer in 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 the BBC in in Northern Ireland. And so this song is a kind of a nodding of the head back to that era. When when a lot of uh, uh, radio plays had sound effects in them, like you know, like the old goon shows and stuff, where you know where you had clippity clop uh, coconuts, you know, for horseshoes and all that kind of stuff, all the sounds that were the panoply of sounds that people made to accompany stories. Uh, he always found that fascinating. So that's there's a bit of that in this song. Um, it's enigmatic lyrically, uh, but that's why. <laughs> the first song, How Come I Feel Bad, and the last song, they're both collaborations. The last song uh, is when Love Goes On. Yes. That's not a collaboration. I wrote that one myself. Oh. <laughs> that's a re-recording of a song I had on an album back in 1990 called Trick or Treat. Um, you know, I've done about 20 albums, I suppose, in my careers to date. So I suppose it would be a surprise if if there was at least one or two songs in that whole bunch that I thought maybe I didn't get 100% right the first time. So Love Goes On was one of those, and I re-recorded it. And there's another one on the album that was a re-recording of a 
song that I recorded even on an earlier album back in the mid eighties called Back to the Center. And that uh that one to is be the one. called To Be the One, yeah. 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 yeah Sorry, I, I forget the titles of my songs sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so one of my favorite songs on the album is It's a Beautiful World Now You're Here. Um do you have a favorite song? Yeah, I like that one. I think my favorite song is The Tower of Gone or Nothing Is As It Seems, both those, because they they were the ones that um, interested me most musically. Um, but I do like uh, It's a Beautiful World, Now You Are Here. I mean, there's, because it's a personal <clears throat> song in a way, as I was writing it with Sean Vaughan, uh, it, it started off as a as a song, as a love song between adults uh, in a chaotic time. Uh, and, but then, you know, uh, around the time I was finishing the song, two dear friends of, of ours uh, had their first grandchild. And uh, when we saw the sort of unbridled joy on their faces, my, my wife said to me, you know, maybe that song is as much about you know, new new life coming onto the planet uh, in a chaotic time, and that's that idea was what helped the song to get finished. And uh, yeah. so uh, it's become very popular here. <laughs> and funnily enough, a lot of people uh, who have just had children, young children, or or grandchildren, uh, requested on the radio over here. So it's, it's become a bit of a uh, a baby. It's got. Uh, it's actually called the baby song. <laughs> oh, a little theme there for new children. Brilliant. Um, and you're currently on tour with Maybe So. It's not exactly a Maybe So tour because, strangely enough, there are aren't many of of the songs on this record that are uh, that I find work well as a solo performer. Uh, I mean, I go out with a band quite often, but this time I've been. You know, they, they are more suited to a band uh, live performance than solo as I am at the moment. Um, and that's because, you know, we weren't able to get bands together because of COVID, you know. So I've always divided anyway my performance between solo and with a band. So this time I'm out solo and uh, I do sing the baby song. Uh, and I have sung uh, the, the Tower of Gone as well, uh, but not all the songs are really ad adapted for solo performance. Mm. It must be so nice though, no matter what kind of tour you do, you have so much repertoire. I think you said earlier, 20 albums or something like that. Yeah. You have so much repertoire to dip into and you never run out. It's It's incredible. No, I mean, the only thing is that you know, you have to stop a concert sometime, you know, and uh, <laughs> no. I suppose, you know, the older I get, uh, I have to confess that probably two hours on stage is as much as I should try and do. <laughs> so yeah. that's about 20 songs, you know. Uh, amazing. You know, and so and do you have any plans for the future now this is out i know that it's it's just after your album's released so perhaps mm. just bask in this first but is there anything else that you've got planned coming up well yes i'm i'm sort of in the death throes of a memoir at the moment <laughs> uh, wow. writing a memoir where it's sort of in in editing mode and that's due for release in october um uh, called crazy dreams which was Wow. was and is one of my, I suppose, most popular songs and probably describes what my life has been. <laughs> Crazy dreams. <laughs> oh, amazing. And so if people want to, to see either Maybe So or want to catch up with your memoir, where should they look? You can get my, my album on my website, paulbrady.com, either as a hard copy CD uh, unfortunately, it's not out on vinyl. We 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 explored the possibility of that, but there's such a glut of a vinyl making in pressing plants these days that you need you have to wait a minimum of nine months before you can get vinyl together at the moment. And we just thought that you know I don't want to wait nine months more to put this record out. So it's available only on CD, 
and digital download either individual tracks or a complete album on my website. And of course, you can hear it on iTunes and on Spotify and on whatever other organ of audio you prefer. Yes. And if you want and, Paul's website, you can find that linked either below or above, depending on what you're watching this on. Um, so you can find that there and that can direct you straight through to find Maybe So and everything else, all the other albums that Paul's done. Um, so sadly, we have run out of time today, Paul, but it was really nice chatting to you and catching up with you and what you're doing. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you, Mary. Nice to talk to you. Tuesday Folk People is going on tour. We're heading to Manchester, Leamington Spa and London on the 23rd, 24th and 25th of June. We're bringing to you five of our previous Tuesday Folk People artists to perform live. Tickets are on sale now, so head on over to our website at home-stage.co.uk to get yours. 